So that's my that's my first question. I'm asking, who's your best bud? Yeah. Just cause he's gonna flow. Mm -hmm. Then I must just. What's the name? What's the name of the show? Uh, bud brought a buddy. Say it again. Bud brought a buddy. Okay. What's up, Steeler Nation? You're tuning in to the first episode of Bud Brought a Buddy. I'm Bud, and I brought my buddy today, Mika Fitzpatrick. So the first question of today with my man, Mika here, who is your favorite bud? My favorite bud? Uh, my favorite bud probably be my, my family, man. OK. I got, I got a big family. I got four other siblings, both of my parents. And you know, they always been there for me. Yep. Call them whenever. Uh, they support me through thick and thin. So. If I had the best bud, it has to be my family. Gotcha. So most people know you from, from New Jersey. Can you give us a little, uh, which hospital were you born in and yeah. what city did you grow up in? Uh, or what uh, high school did you go to? I went, so I, I was born, I forgot which one, I think it was Robert Wood Johnson in New Brunswick. I'm not 100% sure my mom's so. probably gonna be correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was born and raised in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Uh, it's like Central Jersey. It's like 15 minutes from like Rutgers and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I went to high school in Jersey City at St. Peter's Prep. Okay. Uh, it, was just, it was a medium-sized prep school. Uh, it was about 45 minutes to an hour away from where I grew up. Gotcha. All right, so I'm moving, moving on, moving on. <laughs> so, uh, so Pittsburgh recently was voted fourth best city for food. Uh, really? Recently it was. And, yeah. uh, as you see the other day, one of the guys from Barstool came and tasted all the pizzas. Uh -huh. And uh, I want to know, what's your favorite place to eat at in Pittsburgh? Man, there's a bunch of places. So I used to live right in downtown. I know you know about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Probably uh, Eddie Malo's is, is a real good spot. OK. Um, I like Pomonte's, man, those sandwiches. Yeah. They're really, they're a good little, little uh, cheat day meal. Mm -hmm. But uh, both of those right there, I, I hit up. Consistent. Okay. Sure. Okay. That's cool. Cool. Eddie Merlot's is is busting. I, I like that. Y'all like give that. us a little discount next time we go. Eddie Merlot's shout out. <laughs> 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 okay. So last game of the basketball right now. You know, championship series going on. Yeah. Uh, I know you probably got a couple favorite players in the league, but yeah. even if the Lakers or the Heat are not your favorite team, who do you want to win? Um. I, 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 have, I have to go with the, the Lakers, man. I love the Miami the Miami story. Um, okay. You know, just the underdog. But, you know, I, I, I like LeBron. I like that squad. So, you know, I hope they, they pull it out in the, in the end. For sure. What you got? For sure, man. I, I, you can't go against the GOAT, man. Yeah, LeBron yeah. got a creative <laughs> team. It's a creative team. They got yeah. everybody and their mama on the team yeah. and on the bench. And he playing with that chip, too. You know? Yeah. He's yeah. chipping his oldest, so it's going to be tough to do. Nah, it's definitely going to be so. So, I think. We the Lakers of football. Yeah. All right, let's see that. Let's see that. See. Let's see that. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, I'm gonna ask you a uh, real budget like question, all right? Mm -hmm. So uh starting from zero, zero dollars in your bank account. Yeah. You, you just left high school. I mean, no, nah, I take it back. You just left college. Someone hands you a hundred thousand dollars. Budget that hundred thousand dollars for me to make sure that you can survive not only for that year, but a couple years uh, ahead. Ooh. That's, what was yeah. your first? Put tell me, me your, yeah, yeah, I'll put you on the spot. Shoot, the, the first thing I'm gonna do is just determine how much I need, you know, just to live. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm, I'm super, super cheap. I ain't eating out all the time. I'm not buying expensive stuff. So I'm gonna figure out what I need to live. Put that to the side. I couldn't tell you exact number, but yeah. put that to the side. Um, you know, then account for, you know, bills taxes, all that type of stuff. And then honestly with the rest, just, just invest it, put it away, something you can't touch. For sure. Let it just sit there, yep. grow on its own, and take care of yourself. Yeah, Mika's smart man, man. A lot of people don't know, man. <laughs> I get, I try to get Mika to talk all the time. <laughs> Only thing Mika does is play football. That's not true, man. So, <laughs> That's not true at all. So I have to make sure that Mika is, you know, I ask him a couple questions all the time. Man, what you do outside of football? Just to pick his brain. So I am gonna ask you right now in front of everybody, what is your best, no, I'm taking it back. What is your favorite thing you like to do as soon as you leave the building? No football related, no film. Yeah. You can't include film. Yeah. <laughs> you can't include watching nothing. Yeah, watching games. What um, did you like to do? Man, one, I'll just say relaxing, man. Yeah. It's like you're taking it down because being in the building and 
being in a, in a football frame of mind, you got to be on 110 all day. So as soon as I get home, I just like to just turn on some music, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Uh, just relax a little bit, get my mind ready for the rest of the day and get done what I got to get done. But for sure. the main, main thing I like doing is just kind of just sitting down, thinking about the day, going back over the day, and then getting ready for the next half of the day. I feel you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So speaking of music, who's your favorite artist right now? Ah, it depends on the, the, the genre. Feel the mood? Yeah, All right, so R&B, hip hop. Pick an R&B, your favorite okay. R&B, your favorite hip hop. Ah, R&B. So I'm, I'm an old school R&B type dude. I'm real big into like Anthony Hamilton, mm. Jimmy Wine, like that type. John Legend. Yeah. Uh, some of his older stuff. Um, hip hop, rap. What had to be? Ah, uh, uh, so I'm a real big like before games and stuff. I'm a real big old school meat. Uh, you know Lecrae, he's like a Christian mm. rapper type dude. Okay. Out a new album that's real good. Shout uh, out to him. Shout out to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Lecrae. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I say those two right there. Well, those three or four right there. Okay, cool. I'm gonna ask you a couple uh, questions about the second best school in SEC football <laughs> besides Kentucky. That's funny. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Alabama. Yes, a lot of championships. You were a great player. You were the, you were the, uh, the one of the forces on the whole defense the whole time you were there. You made a lot of plays, splash plays after splash play after splash play. Taught you how to be a first rounder. Got you in Miami at a high draft pick. So uh, explain to me who, if one person stuck out to you your whole college career that you went against, who would it be? Calvin Ridley, because mm. we came in, we came in at the same time, we was in the same class. Yep. He was, you know, the top receiver and I was the top DB okay. in the class. And uh, my first two years, I was playing all, I'm pretty much all corner, like nickel. So yep. I was in coverage all the time. And so me and him, we just compete all the time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And every single practice, I was getting better, he was getting better. You know what I'm saying? You see him, you see what he's doing in the league now. You know what I'm saying? So he's, he's a great player, a dude that I respect. He's a good dude on the field. You know what I'm saying? So. He's a guy that, uh, you know, was always challenging. Everybody around mm -hmm. him, not just himself, but the people around him by the way he played and by the way he carried himself, so. Okay. Yeah. Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. So, hey, toss me that white boy real quick. Let me see that white boy. So, Mika. What up, boy? I'm gonna see how well uh, we, I know you. Yeah. And as well, I'm gonna let the fans participate in this as well too. Okay. So you write on here. Um, However you want to do it, you can do two truths and a lie, mm -hmm. or you can do two lies and a truth. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two lies mm -hmm. and a truth. Okay, cool. And I'll pick them. All right. Let's see. Let's see how well you uh, pay attention. No, for real. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna read them out to everybody so everybody can hear and see as well. All right, cool. So I went vegan for five months. I speak Spanish. I did karate for six years growing up. Hmm. So I'm gonna say, I think he did karate growing up, cause his dad was a trainer, and I think he tried to kill him all the time. <laughs> so funny. come again, you doing two lies and the truth? Two lies and the truth, one truth. Mm hmm. That's the truth. The rest of them both other one lie. How did I do? It's the Spanish. It's a, nah, it's the. It's a I vegan. Was vegan for five months. Yeah. He uh -huh. did go vegan too. That's what I said. See how well you pay attention, man. <laughs> All right, cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut it, cut it. Are you going to change this answer? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, back again. Here we go. Uh, uh, you know, Mika put two lies and the truth on here, so this is my first time doing it. I think he went vegan for five months. Yeah, that's it, exactly, man. You pay attention. I don't think you know. You pay good attention. 
<laughs> no, man, but vegan went, so explain the whole process. How was going vegan? Was it hard for five months or was it easy? So the first, the first, I did it, I started in like November last year uh, during the season. Um, and like the first month, it was, it was tough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I was eating a whole lot of meat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, different types of chicken, turkey, stuff like that. So the first month, I was having to eat so, so much food, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But after a while, my body kind of adjusted to it, and um, I was doing well. It felt felt good, felt light. Uh, felt like I had a little bit more energy than if I was heavy, you know okay. what I'm saying? Uh, and then once that quarantine hit, I wasn't able to get the food that I needed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The beans, any specific food that you eat when you, you know, eat like when that. When you're trying to really do it. Yeah. Um, so I kind of kind of fell off during quarantine. But yeah, it happened to the best, so yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened to <laughs> yeah. the best. Man, I only got a couple more questions for you, though, Mika. So I want to ask you right now, you're such an inspirational person. Mm -hmm. uh, since I met you, you've been nothing but uh, a straightforward guy, inspirational type guy. What would you tell your 18-year-old self mm -hmm. if you can travel back? Dang. What I would tell my 18-year-old self, I'll probably, I'll probably say, so I, I live my life, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian man, I live my life. My faith is very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, Shout out so to God. I, see, <laughs> so I'll, I'll probably say don't don't ever let that part of you waver, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, especially, you know, through the ups and the downs, you know what I'm saying? Just don't ever let that part waver, you know what I'm saying? Your, your consistency in your relationship with God, like, don't ever let it, like don't ever fall, don't ever let it go where it's not supposed to. Don't ever go where you're not supposed to be. Don't ever do the things that you know you're not supposed to do. You know what so, so most definitely. That's what, I, that's what I say. Just don't ever let your faith wait. Most definitely. Okay. And then this is my last question of the uh, segment right here for you. What is a bud person in your life? Uh, what's the most influential thing that a bud explained to you? that you remember the most. It can be a family member, friend, a coach, a uh, girlfriend. Yeah. Don't matter. So, something that I try to live my life daily by is uh, we had it up on, our, on one of our walls, the Alabama, and Coach Saban used to say it all the time. Mm -hmm. It was uh, you either suffer the pain of disappointment or you suffer the pain of discipline. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. so I think that's that's something that relates to uh, whether you be <laughs> whether you're poor, a, a regular, poor, a regular person or an athlete, like that pertains to, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's something that I try and carry myself with. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, but I want to uh, thank you for coming on. Yes, sir. We appreciate, appreciate everything. Uh, you know, uh, so signing out on my first episode of Bud Brought a Buddy. My main man, Mika Fitzpatrick, came in here and blessed the stage. So looking forward to seeing you next week.